Hello, in this presentation, we will be setting up vendors in QuickBooks Pro 2018. In prior presentations, we discussed how to download QuickBooks, how to set up the preferences, how to enter items and customers, and now we're going to move to vendors. If you haven't seen those prior videos, that's okay. We can start here from the vendors just to see how to set up the vendors and work within the vendors center. Uh, if you're working along with the problem and you have the backup file, you could then restore the backup file at this point, and that way you'd be at the exact same point we are even if something went wrong in the past. If not, then we'll just learn uh, the vendor center information, how to enter multiple vendors at one time. If you wanted to restore the uh, data file, then you would want to go to the file tab and then open and restore uh, the company as we've seen in the past and that should take you to the same point we are at here. Once we open this up, note the first thing I would recommend is go into the view tab all the time and go into open windows. I like to have, just so you can see, it always starts with these tabs, the shortcuts on the left hand side. Those are not as helpful to me as having the open windows tab. So I like going to the view tab and go to open windows list and that'll give us what we are currently have open that we are currently working on. Usually the default is the home page. I'll keep the home page. I'm going to make it a little bit larger here. Okay, so the next item we're going to do, we're going to enter vendors. Now, we're assuming that we have started a new company and we have a list of vendors, some vendors that we want to enter into our system here and uh, put those vendors into play. So vendors then, of course, are the people that we purchase from the people that we're buying stuff from in this case typically inventory in our case in our example that being guitars within the vendor within the home page you could go to the vendor center by going up to vendors up top and to the vendor center but i always recommend going to the drop down because you can do that at any point within the system so no matter what is open if it isn't the home page you can always go to the vendor up top and go to the vendor center so once again, that's vendors at top, vendor center. Now this is going to look similar to the uh, customer center, except of course the difference being we have vendors. Similar layout because it's the same thing in reverse. Customers being people who owe us money, vendors being people who we owe money to, and therefore we're going to need a list in the case of customer centers who uh, owes us money, in the case of vendor centers who we owe money to, and therefore the setup looks much the same with both the vendor and customer center. We're going to go ahead and just enter one uh, vendor at this case. Uh, th that's going to be the Epiphone. And we're going to start off, meaning uh, uh, someone who buy, we buy guitars from in this example. And we're going to start off doing this mainly because when we start the new company, we want to input the data for those who we owe money to at the beginning. So we're going to enter a beginning balance and let QuickBooks calculate that beginning balance for us, let it do the journal entry for us without us having to do debits and credits, and let it um, do its thing in, in the simplified way. So we're assuming here that we have a vendor as we started up a new company, and we owe that vendor, we owe that vendor $15,000. We want to put that information into our system without having to do anything complex or a journal entry in order to do that. Just put in those beginning balances. In order to do that, we're going to go to, uh, within the vendor center, we're going to go to the new vendor. And instead of adding multiple vendors as we did with the customers, we just need one new vendor because we're only going to be doing this uh, with one vendor at this point. And uh, so then we have this familiar vendor center. Now all I'm going to do is put in Epiphone and that's who we owe, owe the 15000 to. That's going to be our vendor. Now the main thing we want to do there is we want to have the beginning balance of the 15,000. And I could put the date here at uh, the 10, 5 uh, because I'm going to be working in a future date. But I'm going to put uh, the, the date right before the year that we're starting with is 2021. So I'm going to put it in 12, uh, 31, 20. And that's because we're going to be working this problem within the future here. And that's just the nature, once again, of working through these types of problems. And therefore, we're going to say that this is the last date of the year before 
the year that we're going to be entering data into. It's going to be 2021, what we'll be working with. That means that this 15,000 will be on the books as of the end of the prior period and therefore on the books at January 1st of the current year, 2021, that we will be working with. Now, the company name, I'm just going to put the same name. And most of this other information I'm not going to input at this time. We will be dealing with more vendors at a later point, so we can put a lot more of this information in. Uh, typically, when we're writing the bills, of course, when we're writing checks, we need the name of the vendor that we owe. It's the main thing that we're going to need. Um, and we, and it, depending on whether or not, uh, we'll be using the billing option within QuickBooks and printing out, which we typically may not be be using if we're mailing out uh, uh, a bill back to someone who sent us a bill. Uh, we would want, of course, the the information in terms of the address and uh, and the phone and whatnot. We're not going to put this information at this point. We're just going to set up the primary purpose here which is to put that beginning balance in without having to do a journal entry when we set up the new company we'll look at some of these other options at a later point note that uh, we do have the options over here on the payment tab uh, these are going to be payment options the terms normal terms of payment within the vendors uh, we have the tax settings the vendor id uh, account settings and additional information so uh, we're going to move forward with just this beginning balance and see what QuickBooks does with that at this point. So we will say OK there. And here, of course, within the vendor center, then we have the Epiphone 15,000. Now, the question here is, what is QuickBooks going to do with that? Note that we basically are showing here that we owe 15,000. What's going to be um, on, on where is it going to show up on the financial statements, basically? If we go to reports up top and look at one of our main reports, we're going to see the reports drop down up top. We're going to go to the company and financials, and we're going to scroll down to the balance sheet and see what QuickBooks, try to see what QuickBooks did with this. Now, if nothing shows up, then we're going to change the date. We're going to say it's probably a date thing. And we're going to say 12 uh, 31 20 is the date that we entered this information as of. And we see here we've got the uh, accounts payable of the 15. That's what we would expect. We owe the 15 in accounts payable to the vendor. And the, the question here then is the reason that was so simple to do is because we didn't have to do the full journal entry. What's the other side of the journal entry? We increased one account of liability here. Something else must have happened. And note that net income is, is dumping it somehow down here into the equity section. And QuickBooks is basically doing that for us. It's doing the other side of the entry. So let's drill down on this 15 and see what it looks like. We'll get back to the data source. This is called um, auto zooming in on it. So auto zoom, I believe is the proper name. So we'll double click on this 15 and see where that is going, what they're going to take us to. They're going to call it a bill, of course, because a bill is typically the, the type of document used in order to have a payable Although we didn't enter a bill, we just entered the beginning balance. QuickBooks uses bills as that driving component. And note the uh, memo account is opening balance equity. If we double click on that 15 again, we see the bill. So it's going to enter a bill. And again, note that the memo amount is going to be the opening balance equity account. That being the other account that we are taking this to. It's got it here into... I'm sorry, uncategorized expense, and the mem memo is opening balance. So it put the this information into a journal entry one, taking it to accounts payable, increasing the amount owed, and the other side being the uncategorized expense. So it just kind of dumped it into that uncategorized expense. That's the journal entry that was made. That's basically fine for us because we're really starting this system up in 2000 and 21 so the fact that we put this in the prior year in an uncategorized expense is okay let's take a look at that a bit further i'm going to close this i'm going to close this we're back to our balance sheet we see this here I'm going to go back to reports up top and we'll go to the company of financial and look at the main other one which will be the profit and loss similar to the income statement it is basically the income statement for quickbooks and we'll put the date range here. I'm going to say 0101 uh, 
20 to 12, 31, 20. And remember, we entered that data, the 15,000 into the 12, 31. And note, we have information here. We, had no, we haven't entered anything in here, but we have uncategorized income and we have uncategorized expenses. Why? Because in the prior video, we had put in uh, a beginning balance in the accounts receivable, which QuickBooks put into uncategorized income. And now we put something into the beginning balance for uh, a vendor and that put it into accounts payable and the other side went to this expense account. This income statement makes no sense to us. We wouldn't want to report unca uncategorized income or expense, but by us putting this in there as of 1231, it will roll over to the next year properly and we won't have a problem as of 2021 going forward. We're not worried about 2020 in terms of the income statement. We're basically worried about only the balance sheet that we have that amount that we owe. And in order to um, have the simplicity of QuickBooks to just set this up without us doing debits and credits or a journal entry or having two accounts do one thing, we can just enter the opening balance. QuickBooks will dump it into the other uh, account, that being uncategorized. And as long as we're basically just looking for the beginning balance sheet and not the activity in the prior year, we are okay. So this, once again, makes no sense. However, not a problem because we're not using QuickBooks for 2020. We're only setting up the information as of 12-31-20 so that we can then have a beginning balance correct as of first year we will be working with, which is January 1st, 2021. So that's the goal of this process. I'm gonna close this back out and uh, then I'm gonna go back to the vendor center one more time and then we're gonna print a report of the vendors. To go back to uh, the vendors then, notice we have our toggling through the open windows on this side. That again, if you don't have open, it's in the view tab and you wanna go to the open windows there and or we can close out the balance sheet that will take us back to the vendor i'm going to go ahead and say no don't memorize that and so we only have the one vendor what we'd like to see is a report uh, that would show these vendors and so i'm going to show that and we're going to export that to excel with all of our other uh, chapter six or section six stuff and that's going to be great so we're going to go to the reports tab up top we're going to go down to the uh, company financial and actually we're not going down to company and financial excuse me we're going down to vendor and payables where we have the ap ag the ap aging detail the vendor balance summary that's what i'm going to deal with right now that's what we're, we're going to be working with at this point the vendor balance summary and that is as it would assume to be as it is named a vendor balance summary that is who we owe we only own this one individual company the 15,000 note there's no date range so it's basically taking the most current uh, information in there which is of course in the future so QuickBooks is picking this up assuming the most current which in this case 123120 and we're going to go ahead and export this information we could save this we could print it we could print it as a PDF uh, we could export it. I'm going to go ahead and export it to a workbook that we have already set up and uh, show, you, show us how we can put all this into one particular workbook. And in order to do that, we're going to go to Excel over here and we're going to go to uh, create new worksheet. That's worksheet within the workbook. And then once this opens up, we, we want it not in a new workbook, but in the existing workbook, one we have created in the past, if you have not created one, you can go ahead and put it into a new workbook that would then open a new workbook and put it there. But we're going to go ahead and browse and see it. It's already going to where we want it to go because we've done this a few times. But we're going to go to um, this item. It's on the uh, desktop and it's right here in the section six. That's what we're going to be placing this into. So I'm going to double click on that and there we have it and then export once that happens it should open up this uh, pre-existing excel worksheet that we have set up in the past and enter a new tab there it is new tab now i put it right in the middle of these other reports i have previously worked on in this uh, sheet one and we have previously worked on and we're going to drag this i'm going to drag this to the right i'm just going to click on it and drag it to the right and have it over here then i'm going to double click on it and I'm going to say vendors, I'll just call it vendors. 
How about that? There we have it. Now I'm going to make this a bit uh, larger here. So I'm holding down control and scrolling, or you can use your tab over here and just make it a bit larger. And that's that, uh, that is that report. Note that if you want to see the header on these reports, you can go to the uh, print preview type options or the page layout type option down here. And uh, it'll then go to the page layout and you can see the header. So there is a header on it as there is in the report back over here. You can also see that on uh, the file tab. And if you go to the print icon, you'll see the preview, which does indeed have a header and, um, and the dates at this point, which you could uh, keep or remove depending on your preferences. Note, when we went back and forth, it put these items there. And as we've discussed in the past, you can go to uh, the view tab uh, in order to remove those. And those are going to be the split screens. So for some reason, there's a default to have those split screens. You can go ahead and remove that. And then we want to save this file. And then once again, what we have gotten so far is we've done the item lists. We've done the customer balance and we've done the vendors for our new company data that we are now being put into the QuickBooks 2018 program.